The major Scottish migrations to Newfoundland and Labrador took place in the 19th century and involved two unrelated phases. The first brought an influx of lowlanders to the Avalon Peninsula, where a booming fish trade had created opportunities in commerce and trade. In contrast was the migration of Highland Scots to southwestern Newfoundland. Most were farmers who settled on agricultural land in the Codroy Valley and St. George's Bay. Instead of traveling from Scotland directly, many came from Cape Breton Island, where thousands of Highlanders had settled in the late 1700s and early 1800s. Scottish involvement with Newfoundland and Labrador dates to the early 1600s, when European colonizers tried to establish settlements on the island. Among them were John Mason and Sir William Alexander. Mason was an Englishman who had funding from Scottish merchants to advertise the island to Scottish migrants. Alexander was a Scottish aristocrat who was influenced by Mason's work. In 1621, he secured a land grant extending from Placentia Bay to the Gulf of St. Lawrence. Both men promoted the island as a potential home for Scottish migrants, but they were largely unsuccessful in attracting settlers from that area. Alexander abandoned his efforts in less than a year after receiving a larger land grant in what is now Nova Scotia. Mason moved to New England in the 1620s after serving as governor of Cooper's Cove from 1615 to 1621. Almost a century went by before there was renewed Scottish interest in Newfoundland and Labrador. In 1707, Scotland joined England to form the United Kingdom of Great Britain. The Union made it possible for Scottish merchants to trade with British colonies in North America, which included Newfoundland and Labrador. Several lowland firms began shipping goods to the island, usually in exchange for salt fish. But it was not until the 1800s that Scottish migrants settled at Newfoundland and Labrador in significant numbers. A few worked in Labrador for the Hudson's Bay Company, but the vast majority settled on the island of Newfoundland. Lowlanders moved to the island's east coast, and highlanders settled in the west. Newfoundland and Labrador was changing at the start of the 1800s. Its cod fishery was thriving, and its population was increasing rapidly. All of this was linked to developments in Europe. From 1790 until 1815, Great Britain was almost continuously at war with France. The battling nations withdrew from the codfish trade, and Newfoundland gained an almost complete monopoly over the lucrative industry. Its suddenly booming economy attracted thousands of immigrants. Most came from England and Ireland to fish, but smaller numbers also arrived from the Scottish lowlands. In contrast to the English and Irish settlers, very few of the Scots were fishers. Most were merchants, business people, and other professionals who hoped to benefit from the colony's growing population and economy. Until the 1840s, almost all Scottish immigrants came from the Inverclyde area. Some merchant firms there had been regularly trading with Newfoundland and Labrador since the 1770s, when the American Revolution disrupted trade ties there. As Newfoundland and Labrador's fishery evolved from a migratory to a resident industry in the early 1800s, it became profitable for lowland merchants to set up shop on the island. St. John's was the colony's center for trade and commerce, so most Scottish merchants settled there or in major outports on the East Coast. Although Scottish merchants were easily outnumbered by their English competitors, they were among the wealthiest and most successful on the island. Of the 68 merchant wharves at St. John's in 1809, 10 belonged to Scots. Most were better insured than English and Irish firms, which suggests that they were the more valuable businesses. By 1810, Scottish firms were exporting 13% of all saltfish produced in Newfoundland and Labrador. Half a century later, the 1857 census reported that 416 Scottish-born immigrants were living on the island. 316 were based in St. John's. 50 more were in Conception Bay, 40 of whom were living at Harbour Grace, 
and most of the remaining 50 Scots were in Bonavista Bay or Trinity Bay. Between 1840 and 1860, a wave of Highland Scots settled in western Newfoundland. Most were agricultural workers in search of land. In the late 18th and early 19th centuries, farmland was in short supply in the Scottish Highlands, so many families immigrated overseas. Thousands settled at Cape Breton Island, which boasted rich agricultural lands. But by the 1840s, land was also becoming scarce in Cape Breton. Some Scots moved across the Cabot Strait to Newfoundland's southwest coast. Most settled in the Codroy Valley and St. George's Bay. Land there was not only available, but of a similar quality to that in Cape Breton. The movement of Scots from Cape Breton to Newfoundland is known as a secondary migration because they did not travel from Scotland directly. Some migrants had been living in Cape Breton for years or even decades before leaving. Others had been born there and were the children or grandchildren of the original immigrants from Scotland. Vague census data makes it difficult to determine precisely how many people of Scottish descent migrated to southwestern Newfoundland. However, parish registers and oral evidence suggest that at least 51 Scottish moves occurred between Cape Breton and Newfoundland between 1840 and 1860. A move consisted of at least one nuclear family, but may also have included large groups of extended kin. Evidence also indicates that of the roughly 171 households at Codroy Valley in the 1880s, 67 belonged to people of Scottish descent. Although Scottish immigrants were vastly outnumbered by settlers of English and Irish descent, they contributed much to Newfoundland and Labrador's economy and society. Some introduced important and far-reaching changes. William Carson was a physician and political reformer who helped establish representative government on the island in 1832. For the first time in the colony's history, eligible members of the public could elect their own government. Carson also helped to open the first civilian hospital at St. John's in 1814. The work of Scots-Canadian contractor Robert Reed had an enormous impact on the colony's society and economy. Reed's Trans Island Railway revolutionized transportation and communications by linking isolated outports to one another and by connecting them to larger centers. In contrast to some other groups moving to Newfoundland and Labrador in the 1800s, Scots did not have to adapt to a culture that was tremendously different from their own. They practiced Christianity and were not visibly different from most people on the island. In addition, many lowland Scots on the Avalon Peninsula had the added advantage of a good education and they spoke English. In contrast, many highland Scots on the west coast spoke Gaelic, but they almost exclusively settled in large kin groups and could therefore draw support from their family networks. 